Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com. In this lesson, we're going to study the distributive property. And I wrote it out here using symbols. And it might look like you don't understand it at first, but here we're going to soon get to it how we actually use it with numbers and variables. Basically, it says that if you have a number A here, A times the quantity B plus C, then that is the same as a times b plus a times c. We also say that multiplication distributes over addition. Many people also use these little arrows like this. Say that you have to multiply a times b and then also a times c over here. Or it works the same with subtraction. You have to multiply a times b and a times c and subtraction goes there. And let me show you, for example, here, just with plain numbers, how it works. If you have 4 times 2 plus 5, that is equal, that is the same as 4 times 2 plus 4 times 5. That's all it is saying. Now, of course, when you just have numbers here, it is actually easier to calculate here. 2 plus 5 equals 7, and 4 times 7, 28. But this is also true, 28 here, and here you have 8 plus 20, okay, so it is equal. And if you use it with subtraction, then this is the same as 10 times 9 minus 10 times 7. Okay, again it happens that it is easier to use this form to actually calculate 9 minus 7 is 2, and 2 times 10 is 20. But that is true, you know, here you would have 90 minus 70 equals 20. Okay. But we most often use it in algebra when we have a variable somewhere there, so we cannot actually calculate the value as of yet anyway. So, for example, here I have 3 times the quantity x plus 5. So, I distribute this multiplication so that I have 3 times x and 3 times 5. So, here I get 3 times x. But I don't write the multiplication symbol in algebra between a number and a letter. I don't write the multiplication symbol. And then add to it 3 times 5. Like that. Now here I can simplify just a little bit because I can calculate in my mind 3 times 5 is 15. So I can write this as 3x plus 15. Over here the same happens. 7 times a at first and then from that we subtract 7 times 2. And 7 times a is written as 7a. And then minus, and then 7 times 2. Again, I can simplify this 7 times 2 part. I can multiply. It's 14. So it is 7a minus 14. Over here, x, there's a variable outside here. x times 2, it won't matter. It works the same way x times 2, and then x times y. So I'll write x times 2, and plus x times y. However, it is customary in math that we write 2 times x instead of x times 2. So I will write the 2 in front of x, like that. 2x plus xy. Over here, let's do this one. b times b and then minus b times 1. So we get b times b, bb, and minus b times 1. Here we can simplify again a little bit. First of all, b times 1 happens to be just b. And then b times b, there's a shorthand way of writing that. Hopefully you remember that. You have here repeated multiplication by the same number. So we can write that with the exponent, 2. We can write it as b squared. And then this one is just b. Lastly here, we have 5 times 2a. 5 times 2a plus 5 times 7. Again, we can simplify a little bit. We can calculate 5 times 7, 35. And here is 5 times 2 times a. I can multiply 5 times 2. That is 10. And so we get actually 10a plus 35. Next, I will show you how distributive property ties in with the area of rectangles.
I have here an area model to illustrate the distributive property. So here I have a big rectangle that is split into two parts, two rectangles. And there's two ways I can write the area of the whole thing. And those two ways will correspond with this and with that. Okay, first of all, I could think of this area as the whole rectangle being as 5 times this side. The area of a rectangle is side times side. So I can think of it as 5 times that, which is x plus y. So we get 5 times x plus y. That is this times this whole thing. But it is also, I can think of the area in two parts. The area of this rectangle plus the area of that rectangle. And the area of this smaller rectangle is of course the side times side, or 5 times x. 5 times x. And then I would add to that the area of that rectangle, which is 5 times y. Okay. Let's do that again with this one. Now we have three rectangles that together joined make a big rectangle. So I can do the same. I can write the area of the whole thing as this times that. Or as an addition of these partial rectangles. So first, this times that is the area. So it is A times this whole side, which is 2 plus B plus 3. But it is also the area of this rectangle here, which is a times 2, or 2 times a. And the area of this rectangle, which is a times b. And the area of this rectangle, which is a times 3, or 3a. Three okay. Over here, actually, we could still simplify just a little bit, because 2a plus 3a is like 2 apples plus 3 apples would make 5a. But we'll do that in some other lesson. Now here, again, we will use the distributive property, just like here. Even though there are now three terms here, or three add-ends to be added, it still works the exact same way. See, it will get 6 times a, 6 times b, and 6 times 3. So I'll write here 6 times a, like I said, and then add 6 times b, and still add 6 times 3. Over there, we can, the only thing we can simplify here is 6 times 3 equals 18. So, I'm running out of space, but this would be 6a plus 6b plus 18. This other one, again, the same thing happens. I have 2 times 5x, 2 times 4y, and 2 times 3z. So, what will we get? I will get 2 times 5 times x. Can we simplify that? Just without writing down the intermediate step. 2 times 5 times x would give me 10x, right? Then comes minus. And then 2 times 4 times y. 2 times 4 times y gives me 8y, right? Then comes plus. And then lastly, 2 times 3 times z. 2 times 3 times z is 6z. There we go. Lastly, we will look at the distributive property backwards. By that I mean that for all this lesson we have been doing this equals that, going this way. But now we will start with something like this and go that way. And that process is called factoring, okay? Because we are writing this expression that is an addition, we're going to write it as a multiplication. And in multiplication, the things you're multiplying are called factors. A is a factor, and then this whole thing here, B plus C, is also a factor. So, if this 8 plus 12x corresponds to this, it's the addition here, I go that way. I need to find a number, A here, that's going to be a factor, it's going to multiply a sum. And my two terms here, 8 and 12x, they have to have the same factor in them, the same number a is in them, okay? What number is there, or what, it could be letter 2, but anyway, in this case it is a number, what same factor, what same number is in 8 and 12x? 
And the answer is that there is 4 in both because 8 is the same as 4 times 2, right? And this is the same as 4 times 3, and then I have the extra 2. Now you see 4 corresponds to A. It is the same thing in both of these. So now I can take this 4 here to be the factor. 4 times something. And the something is now this and this. Okay? 4 times 2 plus 3x. With the area model here, this number that is the same, the common factor, goes over here. It is the common side, because this side is both in this and this rectangle. And then the 2 and 3x go here. Let's try another example. Here I have a sum. Can I find a common factor in each three of these, in each term here? Is there a common factor in each of these? This is 6 times x, 3 times y. This doesn't look like something times something, but you have to think in your mind, 15, break it down into something times something, okay? It's 3 times 5, right? And these others also are 3 times something. This one is 3 times y, this one is 3 times 2x, like that. And now I have my common factor 3, so that's what I pull out here, 3 times, and then I write the rest as a sum, 2x, y, and 5 go to the sum here, 2x and y and 5. And then in the area model, 3 is here, because it's the common side in each of those three rectangles. And then I would have 2x and y and 5. Okay. Well, we are all done with this, and I hope it was helpful.